Warning, the following contains explicit language and subject matter that may not be suitable for younger listeners, church folk, and people who enjoy kale smoothies. I don't know. I gotta get my act together, man. I'm really, uh, I'm really at a critical point in my life, you know? I am. I'm, I'm serious. I'm a, I'm a fucking psycho, man. I, I've realized this about myself. Like, you know, I'm not married, you know? And I'm really getting to that critical age where, you know, pretty soon I'm just, you know, I gotta pick a street. Either I'm gonna get married, you know? Or I'm just gonna end up being that creepy old guy hanging out in a bar, you know, red chest hair hanging out. <laughs> No, seriously, I don't know what's, uh, what's wrong with me. I just, uh, I, I think I, I just stayed single too long, man. It's just brutal. There's a critical point when you stay single too long and when your brain switches from, uh, you know, like, you know, don't, don't, don't say that to Eh, hey, fuck it, say it. See what happens. <laughs> Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to A Pod Amongst Men. I'm here. This is actually our first ever satellite episode. We're oh. away from the home studio, my dining room. Represent Jersey City here. My yeah. good friend, Mike. I feel special, man. Mikey. <laughs> What's going on, brother? So, Mike, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's uh, appropriate to call you a ladies' man. Uh, I don't think that... You know what <laughs> you got to feel like there's a, like a... People get an idea in their head when you say that. Uh... Uh, retired. Let's say retired. retired. Let's say retired. He's yeah. someone who who has a, a wealth of knowledge about uh, the opposite sex. Yeah. I, I had. I've been around. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. Some some of us more than others. Yeah. Thank you for the beer, by the way. No problem. So, and thanks again for doing this, bro. Yeah. So, I was actually when you first brought it to my attention, like before you even started, like when you were, it was still your brainchild. I was actually very excited about it, and you know, I didn't know where we were going because you know. A lot of people may not know, but we actually worked together before, and we talked about everything, so from politics to physics to... And so I was like, I was very excited to see where we were going to go, like, to see where we were going to go. So you know, like, the, the basic idea behind the podcast, though, like, what, like, the goal... Oh, sorry, the puppy's right here. The goal... <laughs> no, that's all good. I have the same thing at home. My dog's walking around all of a sudden, I'm, like, feeling some brush on my leg. Oh, shit. Oh, no, it's just a dog. But, uh... Yeah, there's a there's kind of a goal uh-huh. here. So I, we want to have fun. Like I want to create a space, not specifically and only for men, mm-hmm. but it's men are, are the target demographic. Right. You know what I mean? Right. There's there's so much stuff in the news, and you hear a lot of people just in culture and on social media talking about you know toxic masculinity, and there's all these men doing terrible shit. And we can agree there's a lot of yeah, men out there doing is. doing some yeah, real um, dirt. Very. <laughs> So, <laughs> the, my problem is that I hear a lot of people talking about the stuff, and I hear a lot of people just talking about the problems. They want to tear people down that are doing bad stuff, which is fine. Right. Go ahead, right. give rid of the give rid of the douchebags. But at the same time, you're never gonna you're never gonna solve the problem unless you're training the next generation, unless you're getting them Absolutely. ready and putting them in a world where that stuff isn't normalized. I agree. So my goal is to kind of set a positive example for men coming up, and even for older men, you know. You kind of look back, see what the youth are doing. I want to create a good space for men to be men, but real men. Right. We know what that is, but I don't think everybody has the same idea of what that is. Um, no, everybody has their own interpretation about everything. You know what I mean? Now we can give us give a little bit of guidance. You know what I mean? To I would say like put people in the right direction because some people, some men, they are men in certain aspects. Like some are better providers. You know, they can be a, a good provider. I'm sure you know friends that are good providers. Absolutely. But they're terrible husbands, like as far yeah. as, you know what I mean, or or spouses. Like, you know, they just don't, you know, I dare to say the word, they just don't know how to love. Like, you know, and that's that's very tragic. Very, it's a very sad thing. In our time, you know? I think a lot of people are like that. Trump, like very, very bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's the saddest thing anyone's ever seen. Yeah, it's very, very tragic. <laughs> but... No, I think you're right, though. There are there are a lot of people that, that don't know how to give or even receive love. Yes, I mean, absolutely. I think that all comes back to, you know, something that happened to you along sometime in your life. Right. I think that's all, you know, 
That's that's not nature. That's not in your nature. That's the way you were raised. I think. Well, I think we're in that we're in that weird generation in between where men had to be men, and it was all about you know you had that macho man that just went to like all of, all it took to be a man was just provide. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You go to work every day. That's how you know your father didn't have to tell you he loved you. You know you were supposed to just pick up on it because. He went to work every day, and he made sure you had food on the table. Yeah. And um, as we go on, we're starting to realize that, you know, even us, you know, I had to learn different. Unfortunately for me, you know, my father wasn't really around when I was growing up. So, you know, I had a single single mother. So I, I kind of had to figure it out mm-hmm. myself, you know what I mean? But I was very fortunate to be raised by women like my mother and my aunts that I... I think I knew how to, I want to, I want to say treat a woman a little better and then, you know, with relationships and being hurt, I kind of got warped somewhere along the way and got into this womanizer phase and then I got through that. Oh, I just want to be, a, I just want to have fun. You know, yeah. I went through the phases, you know, I want to be in love. And the same for me, you know, I, mean? I don't like that hurt. I'm going to, you know, just mess around and I don't care who, how anybody feels about it. But then it wasn't really me. Mm-hmm. And eventually, you'll... you me fix this. There we go. Eventually, you get to that point where, you know, I don't know if it's just growing up or is it just like, just realizing you want something better. You know what I mean? Like, I'm at a weird phase right now. Because I went through the woman as a phase again. <laughs> and, you know, fortunately, it's always after a long-term relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, you think you found the one and... You're like, all right, this is it. This is it. Sometimes it's not it, you know. I tell people all the time, you know, sometimes love is not enough. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? And sometimes like, you could you could love somebody with everything you got, but if it's just if the pieces don't fit together, they don't fit. You know, you could love somebody that's not compatible with you. Absolutely. At the same time, like um, there is a way to make that shit work, but it's a lot of work, Too and you got to really you really got to love that person, right? And they got to love you. No. Yeah. And I, it's interesting that we even speaking about this because I have a particular friend right now, whereas she, you know, she actually told me that she came to me and she told me she's in love with me. I know, I get that. I understand that. And I'm like, oh, (laughs) you know, and I actually, I genuinely love this woman Mm -hmm. and I do have strong feelings for her, but I know we would not work. It just would, we are just, it's like, I I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say, um, water and oil but it's just you know you know you know you like after you Mm -hmm. spend some time alone and i actually did that you know what you want you know what you're looking for you know what's not what you're not going to accept and i strongly advise anybody especially with relationships don't settle no don't settle you know i mean it's one thing to compromise but it's another thing to settle and when i say that as far as compromise like you know, this is the person, I, would, I guess I could use you as a great example. I'm sure with your wife, there were some things that you were like, eh, but you loved her and you saw enough in her to be like, I accept you for you Absolutely. and all your flaws. Absolutely. And I can work with those and we could come together and hopefully she did the same thing with you because you truly have to be in that space in order to make it work, I believe. You know what I mean? Some people... They could, they, I, I don't think they're really making it work. I think they're faking it. I think, I think there's some people that don't realize that they settle. Yeah. They think that that's, this person is everything they want. You know, on paper, maybe they are. No. But the reality, a lot of times, is different. And the longer you're with somebody, the more you learn about them. Exactly. So, I mean, there's, right. you know, there's the people that get married after being together for six months. It's like, you know, even people that are married or they're together for five, six years before they get married, it's still you don't know. You learn something new every day. Oh, I, so sometimes something might come up that you never even thought of before, and that thing might be a deal breaker. And now where are you left, you know? Yeah. So it's tough because no matter how think how sure you think you are, there's always going to be something that could pop oh, up. Yeah. So you got you got memes on social media. I think social media is quite possibly one of the worst things that ever happened to one of the worst and best. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, and and why I say that is because a lot of people. Me and you talk about this all the time. They read headlines or they go mm-hmm. by memes. They don't read the articles. They don't. They just don't do the research. They're lazy. 
for lack of a better word. We all do it. Yeah. I, you know, I try, I'm guilty I try of my myself. Best. I've, done it, I've done it once or twice. I, I really believe in reading an article just because the one or two times that I did jump off a, a um, headline, I made an ass of myself. Uh, I've done it too, man. I've done it too. <laughs> you know, and but, I don't like to do that. You no, know, man. who does? Yeah. But I think that that's something too that, you know, especially our generation, like we're a bit more savvy with the internet. Right. So we have that social media literacy. Exactly. So you're able to tell right off the bat, like, ah, that could be misleading. Or you could say, well, there's no other way to take that headline. So you kind of get an idea of which ones you could skip and which ones you have to delve a little deeper right. into. And even that. Because you got these, you got these headlines that are more like, um, how do they say it, um, to, to catch your eye. I don't like know. clickbait. Clickbait, exactly. And it's, it's the, the headline may not have anything to do with the article. Like yeah, it, it, seen that. I've seen that where it's so off pace as you're like, yo, and then you find yourself going through the comments, and sorry about that, going through the comments and um, actually telling people like, oh no, that's not what it is. That's not. What it is. Then before you know, you done spent like two, three hours. Trying to explain something, and then it's like, you know, will you people just read this article? Because yeah. <laughs> trying to explain something to strangers who just don't give a shit. Yeah, they don't care. They don't care, and they actually hate you for telling them. <laughs> Isn't that something? People, people don't like to, people don't like the truth, man. They don't like the truth, bro. They don't. All right. So, I'm, I'm big on the truth. I'm big on the truth, especially with relationships. Yeah, Let's that's get back to that's relationships. The, well, that's <laughs> that's a big thing. Yeah. I think so. We're both in our thirties right now. Right. So we, I know I've been through that that phase where you're just gonna go meet a bunch of chicks and don't give a shit. You're out there just running around, you know, running the streets. Whoever you meet, right. doesn't matter. But I think as you get older and the more the more women you interact with, the more relationships you have, the more heartbreak you have, you learn a lot about yourself and about what doesn't work for you, which right. I think is even more powerful than the things that do work. Absolutely. Because you know where those deal breakers are. Right. You know where those sensitive spots, you know where the fractures are going to come up. Right. And the problem, I think, that I had before I met my wife, and I was really have, I was struggled with this for a while, is that I was single for so long that I felt like I only knew about the things I didn't want. And you could pick, you could find those things in anybody. Right. So everything became a deal breaker. So you know what I mean? It's hard. It's hard to find somebody to settle down. All you see is the flaws, <laughs> and it ta- it, at that point, it takes someone who's you know really special, and who's also at a point in their life where they have the the patience to deal with that. Because I mean, that can be that's a, like a not a crutch, but that's a that's a problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I I, I would add to that too. Um, I would say that um, you also as like you found your deal breakers, but you also have to find your happiness mm-hmm. within yourself. Because too many people, as opposed to us, where because I'm kind of at that spot right now where yeah. I think I took too long yeah. to be single. You hit the bridge. And there are others that just jump from relationship to relationship. Like, they just don't know how to be alone. Yeah, I'm serial daters. You know what I mean? And it's like, you're never going to find happiness. Like, you're never, like, you're searching for happiness through someone else. And that just doesn't work. Absolutely. And... You know, I I remember when you first met your wife. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you just came back from New Orleans and you were telling me. And you were excited. But I also knew that before you went to New Orleans, you were in a good place. Yeah. You know what I mean? You were in a good place. Like, you were happy with where your career was going and, and where your life in general. You were MMA, just doing your thing, <laughs> staying in shape. I remember. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> And you know it was, but you were ready. Yeah, you, you were gotta ready, you, you know? gotta reach that point where you're comfortable with yourself, just by yourself. Exactly. Because like you said, you can't depend on someone else for your happiness. No. And I was I was used to being alone, so I was just like, listen, it is what it is. You know, I'm not. That's it's like they what they say. Like as soon as you stop looking, is when you find someone. Right. And that's that's you know right. in my case that's how it worked. I don't know if that really happens for everybody, but that's just some shit your, your grandma says to you. But I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I mean, my grandma definitely said it to me. She right. just happened to be right in this case. Yeah, I heard that a couple of times. Um, I stopped looking, so <laughs> we'll yeah. see what happens. And I will say that I'm more focused on happiness right now. And I know, you know, I had to shut a lot of things down. Like when I said I'm retired, I, mm-hmm. I really meant it. Like I had to, you know, stop taking a 4 o'clock call, 4 a.m. calls, stop calling people just because I'm bored. Mm-hmm. Stop. You know, let's go out and eat. Like, I know where this is going, but 
I had to stop that because what I did realize, and I guess it was a type of epiphany, because there were some a couple of females that I was interested in as far as relationship wise, but um, I noticed like they were pulled back, or it was like they just thought everything that was coming out of my mouth was just bullshit, mm-hmm. and I never lied to them or anything. Why do you th- Why do you think that is? All right. Exactly. All right. I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is, and I didn't realize I realized it, but I never really like. Put it into um, how could I say like I didn't I didn't um never really solidified the idea like exactly kinda, you, gotta, like, you know dance around the edges yeah I I I I didn't be I wasn't I wasn't being truthful with myself okay I wasn't being truthful with myself because I was bull, I was bullshitting myself I'm, I hope you know there's kids what listen nah, to bro, me. let her okay. let her fly <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I was bullshitting myself and why I say I was bullshitting myself because um I was looking for someone to be, you know, that person to tell them that I'm ready to settle down, but yet I'm still running around. Yeah. And I'm I'm not showing any characteristics of a man that's ready to settle down. Like okay. I can't sit here and call you in the middle of the night, tell you I'm thinking about you and I want to be with you, but then you see me out on dates or social media every every other day. Like, you know, or I'm with this other chick and you know I'm sleeping around because if you ask me I'm gonna tell you. I just, I just, mm-hmm. I agree with that. Like, I just don't feel like I should bullshit anybody. You're better off. Yeah, because um, it might hurt more in the moment, but it saves you a lot of trouble abs- down the road. Absolutely. But um, I realized that you know, for lack of a better word, I was being a hoe, and if I wouldn't want that for myself, like if I'm not looking for that in a woman, how can I expect a woman, a, a um, a woman of any value or a woman that I would consider being a mate would find any value in me when I'm running the streets. But yet I'm telling them that I want to be with them. So in in a sense, I was lying to them because if I was ready to do those things, I would have been doing, making actions that would have been showing them that, Oh yeah, you're the one that I want to be with. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Walk that walk. Yeah. I can't sit here and be like, you know, yeah, I'm fucking around, but you know you're that one. Yeah, you know, and all you got to do is just tell me that you want to be with me, and I'll drop all of them. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so like, so you, you know, know you, you know you're my main girl. Okay. Yeah, you know. And and who the hell wants that? Right. At and least the ones that you, like you said, the ones you would want wouldn't stand for that. Exactly. And that's why I found myself questioning every time, and it never worked. Mm-hmm. And it never worked. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, you know, I'm not an ugly guy. Like, these girls clearly like me, but something's drawing them away or not at least at the very least drawing them in Mm -hmm. like because they'll take a couple of steps forward because they are intrigued but then they're like "Mm." they reach that point but they they don't cross that line no because i'm i'm not showing them anything to even suggest that i would be faithful (laughs) you Mm -hmm. know like stand up or even be there period and when i realized that and i i Mm -hmm. shit you not bro i really literally had this epiphany about about two months ago <laughs> like literally and it's something isn't it yeah you get they feel that clarity exactly because i had i had similar issues where like, i had all these relationships and they would never work and the girls would get like to a certain point and they would be like ah you know i don't think this is this is right it's not no you're you're a great guy you're a really good man but i you know I, this is i don't know if this is really the right thing for us and i got to the point where i'm like well what the fuck is going on because if you keep telling me I'm such a good guy and yet you're walking out the door, the common denominator here is me. Exactly. So it's clearly something I'm doing and nobody wants to help me and tell me what it is. You know, it leaves you in a point where you have to do a lot of self-examination, exactly. a lot of self-realization, and just kind of call yourself out on the bullshit. Right. Like for me, my problem is always that, like, I'm not that open with people. Like, I, don't, I didn't even realize how many secrets I kept just from everybody. Just not even secrets, but you know what I mean? Like, I don't let people in. Right. right. So, and that's, but that comes over time. You know, you get exactly. burned a couple times, you start yeah. putting up walls. And you feel like, and, and sometimes rightfully so, because I don't think, like, you should put everything on the table right away. You know what I mean? Not I think, right away. I think but because every, some people, some people use that stuff against you. That's it's true. It's a sad world that we live in. You know what that's I mean? That's true. And you want to be open. It's not that you didn't want to. It's just that you didn't see that, you know what I mean? You probably mm-hmm. were even, I would dare say, yearning to have somebody you can open up to. Because then when you do, 
I'm kind of the same way. Mm-hmm. But then when you do find somebody you can open up to, like it's so refreshing. Like it's it's like you're like, oh my god, like yeah. And then it goes to the point where you start pouring too much out, and they're like, whoa. Well, it's weird. It's, <laughs> it, it, I feel like it could fall into, excuse me, into one or two situations where you could feel somebody where you just like you feel comfortable and you start letting you know just the stuff just comes out naturally. Right. But then sometimes you might almost put somebody up on a pedestal. And you're you're afraid to tell them all that stuff because what they think of you matters so much to right. you, and you don't want to let them down and make them think less of you. Right. So I've I've had that happen, yeah. you know. And that's not a knock on the person. That's the the girl. She's that she's a great woman. Exactly. But if you want to get something from them, you have to give too. Yeah. And I so have, that's a two way street. It's it's a funny thing you say that because um, <laughs> I have there's this one particular female that I feel that way about, and. I just feel like I have to come clean one day. Like, I have to put everything on the table. Like, you know what I mean? Before we could go forward. And I'm not even sure if we're going to go forward mm-hmm. after I do it. After I tell her, like, you know, like, listen. I know I was, like, a, <laughs> yeah. being a, not so much a piece of shit, but, you know, because I had no l- obligation to you. You had no yeah. obligation to me other than the fact that I'm interested. You know what I mean? I and, wasn't doing the right thing. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, it's like. I um I have to I have to wait to have that conversation. Like I can't have that conversation with her right now and I get it. Like, you know what I mean? Like I get exactly when you say that, like, you know, it's like it's almost like, yo, get out of my fucking head, bro. Yeah. This is you know what <laughs> I mean? Like I get it. I I'm I'm there. I'm I'm literally there right now. And I gotta do it because if this person is the one that you know, if this person is as special to me as I claim they are, I owe them that. I owe them, I owe them that much. You know? Absolutely. And regardless of this, regardless of the outcome, you know what I mean? Like, she may be like, you know what? I'm not. Yeah, this ain't for me. Yeah, it's too late. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? It's too late. You should have thought about that when you know. Hey, but there's only one way to find out. You got to put it on the table. Exactly. Exactly. But that's you know easier said than done. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're right about that. <laughs> now, getting back to like the fact of how old are you now? Like I'm 34. How old are you? I'm 37. 37. Yeah, I know. I just look young. It's the <laughs> black jeans. I'm black, by the way. If anybody didn't figure that out yet, <laughs> I know there's somebody. Like, I thought he was Korean. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's but, not Jackie Chan. <laughs> <laughs> when we were in our single days, uh huh. I'm still. Well, <laughs> when we were in the you know the running around days. Exactly. What, like nowadays, like it's not the same as it used to be out there for no, single guys. No. And I feel bad for younger younger dudes in the early twenties. Like that landscape out there, it's terrifying. <sighs> like it's terrifying, and I don't think a lot of women understand this. Uh-huh. Like how intimidating it is to be a dude yeah. trying to talk to women. Like just right off the street, like you meet somebody in a bar, like that that takes a lot of balls. Oh, absolutely. As, uh, you have anxiety over that stuff. There's some guys who just can't do it. We all know those guys. You, you know, you clam up, mm-hmm. you get nervous, you start getting that flop sweat on your forehead. I've been there. Start looking like Shaq at the foul line. I've, I've been there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've been I, there. I have too. You got to start somewhere. <laughs> like, um. But nowadays, I think that with like the dating apps and like the Tinder and all that stuff, like it kind of it takes away that. It's almost like a barrier where it's like you need to go through this fire to get to the other side and the other side obviously being a relationship right like you have to do the hard the work to get there mm-hmm. nowadays it's just you swipe and it's like oh okay <laughs> you want to send me some pictures of you in your bathroom and your underwear yeah like that that's not <laughs> that, that ain't dating yeah it's, it's i i agree like how do you build a relationship like that um or i guess I, unless I know, you don't I want know, to i know some people have i don't know if they were on the the more serious um yeah. apps or the ones that they actually pay for like i know I can't even say a handful of people that actually met somebody online as far as, like, the tenders and mm-hmm. that actually made it work. Um, I I think overall it made it a lot harder to find. Made it a lot easier to have sex. But um, as far as quality, because um, you got so many people. I tried it. I tried um, I tried to, um, what was it? I don't even know. A kid in my class, like, I was still an apprentice, and a kid in my class, like, he would show me a new app. Like, oh, yeah. You know, I had no idea what this stuff was. And he's like, oh, no, you got to try it. You got to try it. You meet great girl. And at one point, it, 
you meet a lot of females. You meet women, but fast. Like, but it's like I can't name one of them that I still talk to. I can't name one that I actually took seriously. Mm-hmm. And some of them, unfortunately for them, I think I think it's actually harder on women. You know, I say it's hard for guys, but I think it's harder on the women because some of these women are on these sites and are genuinely looking for love. Oh yeah, I think there's a lot of people that are on there right. for the right reasons. And you know, it's it's to the point where they run into so many assholes that yeah. when they meet a guy that's semi like okay, like they just like this is the one. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's almost like you're you're um you're trying to pick the um. The best chicken at a slaughterhouse that been farmed, that's not even farmed, like open range or anything. Yeah. They're just stuck inside the little chute eating corn all day. It's like, all right, well, give me the one that got the three feathers, not the one that got one. What are you, what are you going to do with that? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You're going to eat that? You're going to get sick. She's going to, you know, think this guy is the one. And just because he's better than the other fuck boys out there. Yeah. It's still a low bar, right? And she's gonna and she's gonna get hurt, and you can't blame her because everybody's in their phone now. When you, mm-hmm. Even when you go out, you go out to a bar, everybody's like this. Like, oh, I picked up my phone, people. Yeah. In case <laughs> you know, and they're they're just their faces glued to their phone, and you don't really have a chance. I remember one time I was at a party, and it was this girl. And she kind of got like a nice little social media following. Or whatever. Hang on, do me a favor. Make sure when you're talking, you're looking at the mic. All right, sorry. sorry. <laughs> hey, keep going. Yeah, she um she has like this little that's a nice little following. So we're at a house party, like you know, it's a good, it's a decent house, but you know, it's it's close enough where people interact. She's there. She's on the phone like this. So you know, I just I just go up to her. Not trying to get with her or anything. I'm just like, yo, you gonna be on your phone all night? Mm-hmm. You know, like th- this whole party is happening and around you. And she caught an attitude, like, oh, fuck, you worried about it? <laughs> like, well, why the fuck are you here? Yeah, what's the point of coming? Yeah, like, you know, you could have stayed your ass home to be on social media. You didn't have to come out for this. You know what I mean? And then we started clowning them. <laughs> like, <laughs> spent the rest of the day talking about it, like, you know, the rest of the night. And, but you know that. Hey, if she's gonna get an attitude, then yeah, I think but, you're within your rights. Yeah, but it's like, come on, you know what I mean? And then guys have to deal. That goes back to guys. Like you have to deal with bullshit like that because now you have these women that they're online and every fucking guy in their fucking on their following list is in their inbox, in, oh, yeah. in their comments. Oh my god, I love down it. in oh, the DMs. God. Jesus. Did you ever talk to like any of your female friends about what it's like? Because we know, obviously, on our side, going on the dating sites, what it's like. And I know for most guys, it's like they send a bunch of messages with potential matches or whatever. Uh-huh. And if you hear like one or two or three back, you know, hey, you scored, great. But with women, think about all the fucking creepy dudes. <laughs> just not even creepy, just how many dudes in general. If you're a half-decent-looking woman, right? like the horror stories I've heard, <laughs> like, oh, my God. God, it's just a wave of like, creepiness yeah. and fuckboys and like, I, um, assholes. Yeah, I actually hear it not so much like my um like my female friends that I know, but um basically the females that I met on those sites. You hear it from them and it's like you have no idea what I've been through. Like, oh, I mean, yeah, like, it's like are you poor thing, why why are you still here? Yeah. <laughs> and they and they're like, you know, and then they meet me and then it's like Oh, you know, oh, yeah, this is this is it. And then sometimes they, they get a little too aggressive. And then I pull back because I'm like, I don't even know you. Yeah. I want to get to know you, but, you know, I'm here to get to know you. But social media has made it to the point where, especially, like, dating apps, mm-hmm. those are the fucking worst. I swear. I think they're the worst because um, you, can, you don't have a chance to get to know them. Because it's either, like you said, swipe left or whatever you're going to do. I don't, I don't I don't even remember which one is the good one. Is mm-hmm. it swipe left for the good or is swipe left to get rid yeah, of Yeah, it? I don't remember. Whatever. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, so I'm now married. It's, like, it's been a while. Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like dating roulette or something. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Now you're in there. Like, it's not even, it's not even getting to know them. Like, but did you ever go on dates with these, with these women? A couple of them. I've been on a few. A couple of them. And not, like, I've been on a few. Some, like, nice girls. I didn't really yeah. have any, like trash bags or anything like that but <laughs> like you know it's just i I've felt, weirdos. <laughs> i've met a couple weirdos but you know i feel like you could find some nice regular women on there but it's just like the atmosphere of just being on there and it's like 
a constant wave of other options. You right. know what it is? You know, exactly. it's like you're always aware that there's 10 guys lined up waiting for you to message them. Exactly. So it's like, how can you really fully commit to one thing? Exactly. So, and as a guy, knowing that, it's like, it's hard. It's, you, you almost have trust issues yeah. for no reason, even if they didn't do anything to, to do that, just because you know the world we're living in now. Right. And you can't even, you can't even go to, like, it's like you, it's a half-hearted attempt. You know what I mean? And it's like you're meeting them right away. Mm-hmm. And then you're, it's on, and then some of them you meet them and it's like, okay, we're going to, like, we're this, you know, next week we're going to be together, you know, in a month we're going to be married. And you're like, whoa, I don't even know your name. Yeah. Yet. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure your name is, you know, Bubble Drum, Bubble Gum. Like, <laughs> bubble yeah, we got to find, like, yeah. find out if you talk in your sleep first. <laughs> like, because that's a deal breaker right there. I'm not waking up to no exorcist shit. Yeah, that'd be scary. <laughs> I never had that. I'm kind of, I'm kind of glad. Like, my you kind kid of scared me with that one. <laughs> my kid talks in his sleep. Really? Yeah, he'll like like on the weekends. He'll like, he'll, he'll, I'll wake up and he'll be in our bed uh-huh. and he talks it, but he'll just he doesn't say like scary stuff. Uh-huh. He just says random shit. But then one time, like I think it was two weeks ago, he started making like weird noises. Oh shit! And it was like some shining shit. <laughs> was, like bro. I'm putting you right back in your fucking bed if you don't cut that shit out. Sure. It was like a, uh, like it, it sounded like it, it shouldn't have come from his little body. I was Man. like, Did you, is anybody else hearing this shit? I watch way too many paranormal shows <laughs> yeah. to, to deal with that. Like, <laughs> like, All right. <laughs> anyway, it's back on that the horrors of dating. <laughs> <laughs> but and like you know what I mean? Like as exactly like you said, like there's so many options that. And then it's like, all right. And then they have this attitude, like, are we doing this or not? Like, you know what I mean? Like, as soon as you hit them, like, I actually found that, you know, like, um, like Facebook and Instagram is a common medium between those. Because mm-hmm. you can actually, I don't have to jump right in. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? Like, I could, you know, I'll hit you with an inbox. You know, I'll get to know you. Like, I want to see what you're about. Like, it's like that soft flirting. Exactly. Like, I like a photo here. I leave yeah. A comment with an emoji here. Like, you know, inbox here or there, just to see where your head is at. And mm-hmm. then I could decide then if I actually want to ask you out on a date or something. And you could decide also, like, if you, if I'm the type of guy that you would want to go on a date. I strongly believe in, you know, not telling people what you're looking for in a person. I strongly believe in that. I don't tell anybody what I'm looking for. And I don't want anybody telling me what they're looking for. Just because I want you to see who I am. And my natural state, you know what I mean? And, you know, forget the honey. You know, we could almost have control over the honeymoon phase because all I can do is be me or the best representation of me I could be because I have, you You don't have, I don't have any, any. um. There's no like, checklist you got to Yeah, get. there's no checklist yeah. going where I could just, oh, well, she likes this, so I'm going to do. And even if you're, that's not your intention to do it, just because you have that list, Absolutely. you're going to emulate that. And no, I think you. I think you're 100 percent right on the money because right. if you start getting in your head what you want, then you're narrowing it down because you yeah, might not exactly. know you want something else. So if you're looking for one particular thing, something better might walk walk right past right. you. And that person might be that better. Yeah. Because there's a lot of times you might see something like you, you like you said before, when you were like, um, we think we want that mm-hmm. until we get it. Yeah. Sometimes you get something that you didn't even know you wanted, mm-hmm. and you're like, this. Yep. It's what I needed, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. you know. But you're right. There's people that are too busy looking for, you know, a six foot albino cowboy and not realizing they wanted a five foot two salsa dancer from, you exactly. know, <laughs> from Monterey. I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree. A lot of a lot of times is 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 that you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, and you'll see women and men, they'll they'll post stuff like that because you see on social media like mm-hmm. oh. She was nothing like what I was looking for. Or he was nothing like what I was looking for, and you know, I, I I'm guilty of that in a in a in a sense because you know, I am kind of shallow. Like you know, what I mean, it's certain. Eh, it, don't be too hard on yourself because we all are. <laughs> yeah, we're we human are. beings. But I'm I'm gonna be honest. Like I'm gonna be you know maybe a little more blunt than I have to be, and that's an issue. Like I gotta learn tact. I don't have it. <laughs> I just don't. Like you know, what I mean, like I I say, and it, it offends a lot of people. That happens. Like, I, I, I don't hey, like we said, people don't like the truth. They don't. And but yeah, I mean, sometimes you got to be, you got to soften the blows a little bit. You still give them the truth, just not everything all at once. You don't have to hit them with a sledgehammer. That's what I do. <laughs> I, that's my problem. That's a big problem I have, and I know it. But I feel like, 
if I care about you, I'm gonna give you the brutal. I'm I'm gonna give you the brutal truth because I want I want it to hurt from me saying it so that you know it's coming from a good place. It's coming from a good place, and you won't have to because the if I'm coming to you and I'm telling you some stuff that's hurting, mm-hmm. the experience. Or whatever I'm warning you about or whatever I'm telling you about is hurting you far more than my words will ever hurt you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And if it comes to where you walk away and be like, you know, Michael's a fucking asshole. I'm fine with that. Yeah. If you you got something from it and it helped you, because eventually you're going to come back and I have pigeon people do this. Like, you know what? One thing I can say about you, you were always real or you always told the truth. Like, and you you never bullshitted me. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm I'm gonna give. Like if you're looking for that friend that's gonna be like, Oh, uh, you probably were right. No, I'll be like, No, you were dead ass wrong. Yeah. But no, I think <laughs> as a as a man, people have like you want people to trust your word. You want you right. want to have integrity. Right. Like I think that's a that's a, a very positive masculine virtue. I don't think that's just you know, obviously not just for men. I think no, that should I think be everybody something. should yeah, be everybody like, should be shooting for that. I want but, all my friends to be like that. Yeah, that's I want your my word. friends to hurt my feelings. I'm sorry. That's a real friend though. <laughs> yeah. And you're only as good as your word. If yeah. your word ain't worth shit, then uh, what are you what are you doing? Mm-hmm. You know, what are you doing with your life? You just walk around one of those guys, you're like a yes man. You want to tell people what they want to hear that. just to avoid conflict or just to because you don't want to be real with anybody. Yeah. Like fuck that dude. Yeah. Like just be honest with Keep people. Keep that you, shit to yourself. Yeah, if you can't, <laughs> but if you can't be honest with people, then you you shouldn't be dealing with them. Exactly. Like I if, agree. This, if there's somebody you feel you really can't be honest with, then you don't need that person in your life, yeah. and you, they don't need you in theirs. Yeah. And I would get rid of somebody if they're if they're that way with me. Like if they yeah. bullshit me, if they're you know what I mean, or if I feel like they they just agree with everything I say. Like I don't, I don't need you around. I, well, I need you, I need people to tell me like yo you're fucking up or yeah. you know. I really don't need you to tell me I'm doing a good job. But every now and then, if you want to give me an attaboy, that's fine. But I need people, you know, maybe it's the cynic yeah. in me. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> I need people to tell me, like, yo, step your game up. Or you're slacking. Or yeah. you're fucking up major. Like, you know what I mean? Well, there's a way, too, to do that. Because if there's somebody all they want to tell you is everything you're doing wrong, then that, you know, that might not be the best way to about it. But when, yeah. it's, when you trust and when somebody's telling you something from a good place because they right. care about you, they don't want to see you like you said, fucking up, then right. they're going to do it. And that's somebody that we can respect. That's a real friend. Exactly. A real friend will call you out on your own bullshit. Every time. Yeah. That's, I think, that's how, like, my friends, that's one of the things we, we value with each other. Right. So we call each other out when we're fucked up. I've, I've done a lot of fucked up stuff. And they sit me down like, dude, what are you, what are you doing? Yeah. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> like, you got to stop this shit. But anyway, so... Like I said, man, it's just, there's so much stuff, especially in dating, that you have to navigate through. So much bullshit, and the, the social media complicates it, because, like we said, there's too many options, and you never trust that somebody's really ready to commit. It, cre- it creates commitment issues, right? you know, because everybody, men and women, we both realize, like you said, that we have other options. Like, for my case, I'm married, I'm a husband, I, have, I made a commitment. Like, that's always something I'm mindful of. Like, I don't like leaving a bunch of comments on other girls' pages and stuff like that because it's not appropriate. Not at all. And I wouldn't appreciate it if my wife was doing that, you know, the other way. So, it's, it's you know, but it just, it this whole environment, the social media, it just creates so many more potential issues right. for relationships. And uh, you got something. Hit me. Yeah. I... I was actually getting on my apprentice, one of my apprentices, mm-hmm. today about that. And he did it about a week ago. But I saw it. I actually screenshotted it when he did it because he got on some girl, you know, one of those Instagram models like, oh, I'll do uh, it. He fell in the thirst trap. Yeah, he, he said <laughs> something to the, you know, he's young. But like I told him, I was like, listen, you got a good, you got a good woman at home. He's got a kid. They got a house together. They, You know what I mean? And I basically told him, I was like, listen can't do shit like that mm-hmm. you know what i mean you can't you you cannot and then he even laughed about it. he was like yeah you know my, you know my girl you know my wife she she liked the comment i was like yeah she should whoop your ass like, yeah you she know liked I mean? it let you know let you I know seen i that. seen that yeah. like you know what i mean like you don't you don't do that like and i told him i was like listen your girl regardless of how she might look you might not think she looks as good as this girl but she's worth a thousand of her mm-hmm I've been there, like you know what I mean. I've I've dealt with a couple of these so-called. I, they're terrible. Like they they a lot of them are not 
good human beings, man. Yeah. They, I mean, yeah. I think it's, <laughs> it says a lot about a person if they feel the need to, you know, post pictures of themselves in their underwear for right. the world to see right. because they're maybe they're insecure. Yeah. I don't Unlikely. Yeah. I don't know too many secure girls that are doing that. No, no. I, I you know, I, I, I actually like, even if I like a girl and I see her put up a picture and I can know her, like, personally. Mm-hmm. And if I see a picture of her, like, it's, there's actually one, and you know what I mean? She's actually a stripper. <laughs> and, you know, I'm thinking, I don't know if she's, I don't know if she's retired or if she's in and out. I don't, I really don't understand it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I don't judge. But, like, when she does put pictures up like that, I don't like them, and I purposely don't like them because, you know what I mean, I want to show you that that's not, you know what I mean, that's not what it's about. Like, you know, I'm, you know. Especially if you're trying to get my attention. I don't know mm-hmm. if that's what you're trying to do, but I'm not going to like that type of picture. Now, if you got something with content, then, you know, I like it. Or you clothed. Because that's what I like to see. Yeah. If you, I mean, um, if, if, if a woman, if it's a beautiful woman, by all means, like, be, you know, show off how good you look. Right. But there's a, there's a, a you know, it's a matter of taste. Right. Like, have, a, have enough self-respect. You don't need to, you know, just have pictures of your ass out there. Like, that's, right. what does that say? Yeah. What kind of message is that sending? Because you're only you're not going to attract nice guys. Nice guys don't want to deal with that. The same way we were talking, a good girl isn't going to want to deal uh, with our bullshit. Not going to want to deal with it at all. So you have to be mindful of what you're putting out in the world. Yeah. And especially, and, and we know, like as a woman, you better know that there's some fucking creeps out there. Yeah. And and one thing also, like especially like to 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 that extent, because like with me, you 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 know me personally. Mm-hmm. And you see some of the shit that I put up, and you know, I don't believe a word of it. Like, no, you know what it's I mean? just yeah, for laughs. Sometimes it's for laughs, and but some people don't know how to discern that, or that's all they put. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, me and you had this conversation years ago, and I remember it when we were talking about you know when we put up thought provoking content, mm-hmm. nobody touches it. You know, mm-hmm. you put up some dumb Dude, shit, and everybody some likes dumb it. Shit and then get like you know now you're viral like <laughs> you know it's sad it's, sad truth so sad but you know i mean like you got to find some some balance in it but i did find myself i kind of changed because i did find myself and i'm guilty of this because i did find myself straying away from the um the thought-provoking content mm-hmm. to some extent you know what i mean or i just don't share my my thoughts or my beliefs the way i want to just because I'm tired of offending people. Like, you know what I mean? I'm tired of... Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what it is? I'm tired of arguing with people. Yeah. But I'm tired of arguing with people that really don't matter in my life. They don't. I mean, I, I fell into that for a while. You saw, like, I would just right. get in arguments every other day because I decided I wanted to talk about politics on Facebook. Right. It ain't worth it, man. Oh, no. Like, you know, you can talk to people you care about. You have, like, real conversations. Right. That's fine. But if you just all you're gonna do is just share news articles and just argue yeah. with people that are on the other side, <laughs> it's pointless. Give me a source. Give me a source. Yeah. What's your source? You give oh, them twenty of it. <laughs> yeah. And they act like they didn't see not one of them. You're like, yeah. yo, I just gave you like ten of them. <laughs> it's literally right above my comment. No, give me a source. I asked you for some. <laughs> Fuck you. But yeah, man, you know what it is? Like we, you get to a point where you just get tired of. You start. You start being able to identify the bullshit. Right. And I know, like, we we both know people that. You know, you just post a bunch of, like, stuff about relationships. You're either talking shit about men or talking shit about women. Right. You know, you talk, you, I don't know. Just people aren't spreading the good things. Like, they want to they laugh at the shittiness, which, right. okay, I get it. It's human instinct. Like, you can't help it. You find something funny, that's fine. But if that's all you're going to put out there, yeah. like, does that, is that really, like, what is that for? You know? I agree. And you have to, you have, like I said, you have to find some type of balance. And when you find yourself, you know, because we're all guilty of it, we're, we we find ourselves where we're just putting up only negative, or mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Then you have to find that balance, and you have to get back to the positive. Sometimes we're in a dark place and don't even know it. You know yeah. I mean? All of a sudden, you look back through your Instagram feed, like, wow, I was posting some real, some real heavy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I got a little emo there. <laughs> yeah. And it, it happens, you know. I'm, you know. I'm guilty of it. Sometimes I just put stuff and it, it could be emo as fuck. And then some, I've had females and guys hit me like, yo, you all right? Mm-hmm. And I, I don't even remember what I put up. Like, you know what I mean? Because I literally just posted it because I was like, oh, wow. It might not even be pertaining to me. But sometimes I like to post in mind that somebody needs to see this. Mm-hmm. One, somebody, somebody, this is messages for somebody. You know what I mean? But it could come off as a little like a cry for help sometime. And, you know, yeah. No, there's like, a lot of people that do that. Yeah. 
a lot of people, like I've talked about this on an older episode, like a lot of older people don't understand. They really don't like grasp the concept of how the whole thing works. So you saw a bunch of things you liked, you just hit share. Yeah. But you don't realize now when somebody else opens their feed, they're going to see like yeah. 12 things from you in a row that all talk about how sad you are and yeah. how you can't trust the opposite sex. Yeah. Like, bro, do you realize what you just did? Yeah. People are going to be calling suicide hotlines, you know, telling somebody to just send an officer to your house. The best and worst thing I ever did. I mean, the best and worst thing that happened to me as far as social media is when my mother got a Facebook account. My mom's not on there. It is, it is like, mom. Stop. And sometimes I had to call her yeah. and tell her, like, yo, you need to take that down right now. I remember mm-hmm. one time, and I'm, you know, I'm going to say it, but I'm a little ashamed of it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's all good, man. No judgment. She posted a picture. I sent her a picture. Me and this girl went out, and she posted a picture of me and this female. I sent it to her because I was in, you know, dressed up tuxedo. It was a black, it was a black tie. But, and she posted a picture, but this girl was in a relationship. At the time, and I'm like, "Oh no, you got to take that shit down." <laughs> She's like, "What? What happened?" Do you nice realize thing. what you've done? Yeah, I'm like, "Please take that picture down." It's, you know, I, I, you know me. You know, mm. you know me. You know, I like you said. Like I, I've done some things that I'm not proud of. We all have. And um, yeah, and it it, it got it got crazy because it's like, oh holy! Like luckily, I caught it. I didn't catch it right away. It was up for like a day. And I'm like, yo, don't <laughs> do that. Please take that picture down. Yeah. It's like, Phew. yeah. And then, you know, and then she get up there. Like, if I put something, like, oh, my God, you need to come. Like, I put up about the keto. I'm on keto now. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if you saw it. And, you know, because I was diagnosed pre-diabetic. And I put it up. Like, you know, I'm talking about it. I didn't talk about it right away, but I didn't talk about it. She up there. She like, oh, you need to stop eating sugar. And you need to do that. Like, mom, did you read the post? <laughs> like, you know, it's First funny. Of all, mom, this is Facebook, not WebMD, okay? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, oh my God, don't talk about WebMD. I, I've died about three times already. <laughs> I had an issue. Like, I, I don't I don't speak to my biological father anymore. Mm-hmm. But at one point, like, when I was still I'm sorry to hear that. Nah, it doesn't mm-hmm. happen. I was, I'm somebody who was very lucky. I got... I was blessed to have a really good stepfather in my life. I believe we so, had a conversation. Yeah, he's, he's a good man. I got a lot of respect for him. Okay. We don't see eye to eye on some things, but I love him with all my heart. He's a great man. All right. But uh, anyway, so at one point when I was still talking to my biological father, like he got Facebook. And it got to the point where anytime I would post something, he would always comment on everything. But it was like like the random like dumb comments. It wasn't like, hey, you're looking good. Like, hey, that's great. All right. It was like making an inside joke that only me and him knew about or mm-hmm. something that was like randomly – it like wasn't even connected or relevant or any way. And it was right. just like, it came off as weird. Yeah, I get that. And I, I had to tell that. him, like, you know, Dad, you don't have to comment on everything, everything. I post. <laughs> like, everything. Right. Everything? <laughs> everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, that's, that's something, that's a generational thing, I think. Right, exactly. I and mean, I have also had, like, people my age, like, so, yo, take that fucking picture down. Like, I call, I told my boss I wasn't going into work today because I had a funeral. And you're posting the shit that we're out. Yeah. You know. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, bro. Don't do that. Sorry, I didn't check the memo. Yeah, no phones. <laughs> no no <laughs> cameras, no phones. That That's, you know. But for the most part, let's get back to it. Um, Let me ask right, Tinder's right. bad. Yeah. Facebook's good. IG's good. <laughs> no. Let me ask you this. You ever like you ever had like a real bad experience like taking a chick out on a date from like that you, maybe that you met on like Tinder or something like that? Like, did you ever have like a bad one? Because I've I've had. I'll, I'll tell you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell <laughs> I'm gonna you. Tell, I'm gonna t- tell yours. I'm gonna tell it. I'm gonna tell. My my worst one was I got stood up. Really? I showed up to the place and she said, "Oh no no, I'm I'm on my way. I'm okay." Twenty minutes goes by, still nothing. Thirty minutes, like yeah, what the fuck. So I hit her up. Hey, hey, you, you said, sorry, I got pulled over. I'm like, oh, all right. I'm like, okay, well, now I'm, I'm, you kind of disarmed me. I'm like, all right, listen, I'm here. You know, I'll wait. She, okay. An hour goes by. Hmm. Nothing. I, I send a message. She's like, are you there? I'm like, I've been sitting outside for an hour. I'm like, yeah. where are you? She said, oh, I'm in front of the place. I'm looking at her. I'm like, what? I'm like, this, this bitch ain't here. Wow. Like, Get the fuck out of here. She, she's like, oh, yeah, you're in the place on this street? I'm like, no. No, I'm at the place you told me where you sent me the address where we were going to meet. I'm like, yeah, listen, if you're just going to play games, like, I'm going right, home. Nothing, nothing He's going home mad. 
just putting on angry music, <laughs> gripping the steering wheel, <laughs> just saying every fuck, every terrible thing on your. You know, this, the nerve of some people, this <laughs> motherfucking. But you know what I mean, and it, that's. That one, that one actually hurt. You know what I mean? Like, really? Because it like, wasn't necessary. Exactly. It's like, why, why, why not just say, oh, I can't make it? All right. Like, and then n- never talk to me again. It would have been better than saying, all right, I'm on my way. Right. When clearly you're just full of shit. And then I started thinking, like, maybe I got catfished. Maybe it wasn't a real person. That happened to me before. I got catfished before catfish was a thing. Really? On everything. All right. Lay it <laughs> on me, man. All right. <laughs> so, remember years back when we had the chat lines, right? Chat lines. What do you mean? Like you talk on the phone, like the landlines. Oh, like, oh, like a like a regular phone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like they had these things called chat lines. Like, and you just talk and you meet people through that. Oh no, I never even heard of that. Yeah, it was a thing. You know, oh, man. And <laughs> it's got me fucked up now. <laughs> and this girl, she hit me up, and she um, she she um, how? Uh, let me get this straight because I I don't want to lie to you, and it's been a while. Because this was like... This is get the, to the best of your memory. I'm yeah. Like, I won't this, hold it against you. So, you know, we're, we're going back and forth. She talked, uh, you know, and then, you know, for some weird reason, you know, and I was young, mm-hmm. very conceited, very shallow. <laughs> so she's asking me about, like, fat girls. Okay. And I'm like... No, nah, I don't do that. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't do that. Like, you know, I. So she's like, you know, I was like, you know, you can have a little chunk, you know, because at the end of the day, I'm black. I, I don't mind a little, you know, chunk. <laughs> you want to feel the heat? You have to have the meat. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, but my, my know, grandma I'm, told me that. <laughs> I like your grandma. No, <laughs> my grandma legit told me. She says, "Beauty's only skin deep." But ugly is down to the bone. Definitely. <laughs> my grandma told me that one too, actually. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sure Keep your going. grandma's ain't black. Right? Yeah. She got a lot of... That's Sicilian. From the South. Oh, yeah, yeah she black. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, now, you know, but she kept references, kept asking me about big girls. I'm like, what do you mean big? Like, define big. And she was like, oh, you know, well, you tell me what big is to you. I was like, you know, well, you got... um. I forgot who I said, but then I said Monique. I remember when Monique, the, the comedian? I know. Remember she was a big girl. She was a big girl. She, yeah, she was still kind of big. Yeah, kind of, but she... she, was, she was, yeah, she lost a lot. She, of, she was what I, at the time, I was calling big. You talking <laughs> like, in the, like, pre-precious? Yeah, like that, that, like, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, she, you know, when she had the Parker show and all that, like, mm-hmm. when she was actually living off her fat. You know, she made a living off it. Now she she talks shit about fat girls. I don't get it. But back to the back to the nerve of her. But <laughs> but you know, so you know, I'm telling her, I'm like, you know, yeah, it's like yeah, but you know, Monique is big, and as I was doing that, you know, yeah. insensitive as hell. But I at the end, end of the day, like I'm not thinking I'm talking to a big girl because that's uh, not what you described yourself as, all right? So now she was working at um. Actually, in Paramus at the um, the Christmas tree shop. Okay. So she asked me to come up one time because she was from Patterson. She asked me to come up. I'm like, yeah, come see me at my job. Borrowed my grandfather's car, drove all the way to motherfucking Paramus. Uh, you know, I'm from Jersey City. I do not go to no fucking Paramus, man. <laughs> Black teenager going to Paramus is just not a good look. But I went. Because I want to see this girl because you described her. But at that time, I was telling people exactly what I was looking for. Mm-hmm. And she was painting herself as exactly what I was looking for. Getting a job. I go inside, right? So now I'm like, yo, I'm here. Where are you? Like, you know what I mean? She's like, you know, she's not answering. She's not telling you. I'm like, yo, I'm about to leave. Like, fuck this shit. Like, I don't got time. Like, I just came like 20, 30 minutes up here and you, you're not even answering. I'm gone. But while I'm up there, I see this big ass girl and her friends looking at me. <laughs> And I'm like, I hope it's the little light-skinned one, because that's who I was supposed to be talking to. But I see them looking at me. Like, I'm not a dummy. Like, you know what I'm saying? I see them looking, they pointing, and I'm like, you know what? I'm out. So then she called me right after I leave. I'm like, yo, why are you playing with me? Like, you saw me there. Like, I saw you and your friends looking at me. She's like, oh, well, I got something to tell you. I was like, man, I already know what you're going to tell me. You was the big girl. Yeah. I was like, I know what you're going to tell me. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then she's like, oh, I just, because you told me what you liked, and, you know, I just didn't think that you would um, you would want to talk to me. 
And I was like, no, I wouldn't. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You didn't even give me that choice. And I was very big That's on true. choice. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because you didn't even have to do that. You wasted my time. You wasted your time. I'm pretty sure there's somebody out there for you. But you already knew that I wasn't for you. So why would yeah. you even do that to you or myself? But at the end of the day, like I said, I was very shallow. And I'm pretty sure I said it a lot meaner than I said it right now. But it was to that that effect that, you know, like, yeah, you, you lied. Like, you lied mm-hmm. about how you look. And I really got catfished before catfish was a thing. Like, it wasn't, we didn't, I don't even think we had internet like that. Like, social media, I would say. Well, you know what, that's the thing. When we were teenagers, like, that time, especially, like, well, even that age, like, when you're a teenager, you know, you're still learning about yourself. You're still figuring out who you are as a person. Right. You know, people do dumb shit. You look back, I, I could, I don't even want to talk about some of the, like, you know, you just wake up in the middle of the night, I can't believe I did that when I was 16, you know what I mean? Like, shit like that. But it's like, it, it, being open with somebody, being honest, like, for her to, for her to do the right thing in that situation would have been to say, well, you know, I'm, I'm a little bigger, you know, right. is that going to be a problem for you? That would, that's something that takes character, and it takes confidence, and, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, security, like, you... You, it takes something, and that's something that most Confidence. yeah most teenagers don't really have that yet. You're yeah, still, you're right. You're so, right. and even for us, like for us to know, you know, that to be insensitive and like call somebody out for just for being a big girl, right? That's that's not something we should be doing, right? But now, that comes if, with if, wisdom. That yeah, comes with happened, years. If it happened today, I would definitely have handled it differently. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? No, I, I, I definitely still believe that. I still would have been, you know, a little. I probably wouldn't have been upset because now it's such a common thing now, whereas. Social media fucked everything up. Like we, mm-hmm. catfish is a thing now. So we're already looking for the catfish. You know what I mean? Do, what do they expect? Like, are they expecting to get away with that? Like, what's the end game there, bro? I have no idea. But I saw an episode. I actually put it on Facebook. If you have a chance, go on my page. The shit worked. No, uh, what shit, do you mean it worked, bro? It worked. Like they were cat. They literally were catfishing each other. And this is such a fucked up story. <laughs> <laughs> like the female was catfishing. The guy, as a transgender. So yeah, the female like was saying she was a transgender. That as in, she used to be a man. Okay. But that she was just, just, she was a biological she female. She was a female. Okay. Well, not a bad looking female. She was all right. You know what I mean? Interesting. A, I, wow. Weird exactly. flex, but okay. <laughs> Very weird flex. Right? <laughs> Very. But, um, yeah, and he... Was acting like and giving her pictures of his cousin. I guess his cousin looked a lot better than him or whatever. Wasn't even telling her his name or whatever. And she was. And another thing, she actually never had sex or never been in a relationship with a man. She was like, she. I guess she was a lesbian and she oh, decided okay. that she was going to actually try a man out. Try and he jumped up on that pogo stick. Yeah, he was actually going to be. Her first. Now, okay. how lucky is this motherfucker? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, what? Like, you know what I mean? Like, because he's, and he was upset that she wasn't a transgender. Hmm. But he wanted a female. I don't know. I didn't get it. Like, it might have been made up because the story just seemed, but it was actually on that show. Catfish, you know what, like, though? There's some crazy shit out there. There was a documentary on Netflix. I don't know if it's still there. I think it's called, like, like Hot Blonde, Young Hot Blonde or something like that. Either way, so this this guy, he was a uh, he was a married guy. You know, he's older. I think he was in his like late thirties, early forties. You know, he's going online like chat rooms and stuff, and he he meets this younger girl, and she's cute and everything like that. And uh, there's this whole thing where he he told her that he was you know younger, and all this stuff happened, and like she, it, it was basically I don't want to give the whole thing away, mm-hmm. but he was catfishing her. And then, lo and behold, all this stuff happened, and she ended up being the one that was catfishing him too. Mm. It ended up somebody died in the whole situation. Oh, it got it got ugly. Now, there's a documentary or show. It's a documentary, so it's real life. Oh. It happened. Wow. He got a, I, I can't. God, I can't remember the fucking name of it, but it was it's on Netflix, like Hot Blonde or something. Is it Young Hot Blonde? Young well, Hot think, Blonde or some, I, I something to that effect. Something like- with a name similar to that. Yeah, I don't want to give it away, and it's been a while since I watched it. Uh-huh. But at first, I was just kind of like, you know, I was doing other stuff, and I was, like, I was keeping up with it, but I wasn't paying yeah. close attention. And I got about, like, 20, 30 minutes in, and I was like, yo, wait, what? And I had to sit down and start watching it. Yeah. Now you're paying attention. Yeah. You were on your phone at first, but now you, now they got you. No. <laughs> like, there's a fucking, it's, it was messed up. 
Uh, that I'm going to look. At, I'm going to look for that. Check, look at a, that. You watch that and abducted in plain sight. Abducted in plain sight. Yo, dude, that's, that's sound like it's going to make me very sad. Watch <laughs> that one first. It's going to make you mad, um, and then you're going to laugh, and then you're going to be mad again, mm. and then you're just going to be confused. <laughs> it's sound like my type of show, bro. It is the most fucked up story I've ever heard. It's and it's it's a, doc, a documentary. It's not a, a show, so it's only one thing. Right. But nothing better than emotional roller coasters while Netflix bro, and it chill. will fuck you up. You're gonna be like, no fucking way. There's no way anybody's that dumb. Really? That's you're gonna say that. I guarantee it. Yeah. And there's aliens involved too. Oh, come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your policy on women with kids? Um, at you, our, you have a son, at, at right? our at our age, I think it's um it's inevitable. You know what I mean? Like we're you know mid mid thirties. Like how are you gonna if you find somebody that that's really a unicorn? If you really find, but I don't find anything wrong with it. I mm-hmm. think actually, you know, because I'm at a place where I can have another one, or I I I won't have another one, and so it really doesn't matter to me. You know, either way, but I think it's fair game. Now, now let's, let's go back. Say we're twenty five. No, no, no. Uh, one kid, one kid. Because I I did deal with somebody at that age that she had one kid, but the kid didn't even live with her at the time. And um, but it more so, no. Okay. You're, you're younger. You're running around. I had my own son. You know, I had my son young, not that young, but young enough. And I was so involved in my own, you know even still to this day, like, where I couldn't even understand, like, dealing with somebody else's kid like, mm-hmm. I, at that time, you know. But now I'm a little older, I'm a little wiser, and more understanding, I guess. You know, I I actually, I don't know a woman that I've talked to recently that don't have a, a child, like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Unless they're younger. You yeah, know? I mean, I think it's definitely, as, as we get older, it's right. going to be more and more rare. Right. And I think as we get older and you see a woman who doesn't have any kids or has never been married, that should... Red flag. Be, yeah, <laughs> it's a big red flag. Red flag. <laughs> Same thing for guys. Like what I said before, yeah. I said you were getting to that bridge. It's like when you get... when As like a guy or, or a man or a woman, you get to a certain age when you've never been married or you know you don't have like serious relationships. It's almost like you get too used to being on your own. Right. And then it becomes too mu- too difficult, too much of a task to have to adjust to living with somebody else and yeah. sharing your life because that's right. that's a huge thing. So there's a lot of I've talked to women who said like they won't date a guy who's never been married by a certain age or at least been engaged or you know been almost there. I don't think that I don't, I don't agree with that. That goes back to the yeah, whole I, having I, the checklist. I, I don't agree with that cuz why I say that is because, you know what I mean, like and I don't think you were engaged or anything before you met your wife, right? No. Exactly. And why I say that is because too many people, and because of divorce, I think divorce is the worst thing that ever happened to marriage. You know, because I feel like, you know, thank you, um, King, was King Henry? <laughs> was it King Henry or King, um... Henry VIII. Henry VIII, yeah. right? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, he and, did, he did like everything but divorce. Yeah, you know, but... He was why, chopping women's heads off and yeah, shit. Yeah, he's a very cynical man. Yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> The reason An why innovator, if you will. Very. <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. Let me just make that clear. I don't want. I. If you think about it, I think if if there was no such thing as divorce, and you had to, like, if we're going into this union, that's it. I think people would be more cautious, you know, and take their time to actually get to know people. Like you were saying before, it's people after six months they're getting married, they're mm-hmm. engaged, like. How the fuck do you know somebody in six months? Yeah. It it takes me, you know what I mean? It takes me six months to know if I even want to live with you or not. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I think people go too fast, but maybe I go too slow. I don't know. Yeah, it's you know a happy I mean? medium, and everybody's yeah. different, too. Exactly. I don't judge anybody. Mm-hmm. Whatever works for you, if it works, it works. But what I will say is, you got to look at it. It's the reason why we have so many divorces. Because people jump in things, Not even you don't even know this person. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then you have these women that have this stigma. Oh, if he don't give me a ring by a year, I'm cutting him off. 
And I don't agree with that. I'm like, hold up. Now, you got this guy. And I've asked him these questions. I've had these conversations. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so you're with a man. He's doing everything you want. Everything you ever look for. Everything, like, you're a perfect man. The only thing that he did not do or won't do is marry you. And you're willing to throw all of that away for a ring? Yeah. You're a fucking idiot. So this guy, <laughs> he meets every 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 mark on the checklist. What? And just because you're not all the way there yet, yet being the key word, right. you're just going to say fuck it. Right, because he didn't meet your deadline. Yeah. That is the silliest. That is such a no, toxic. That's some dumb shit. And it all comes from these dumbass memes, what we were going from mm. before, because you get these memes and... It got to be some content, like, and I tell people a lot of times, like, some of these memes are very dangerous, and people don't understand that, and they look at it like, no, it's because, all right, well, you interpret it that way, mm-hmm. just like people interpret, I don't even want to say the Bible, because that'll lead us down a whole other rabbit hole, but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it will, so let's keep yeah, it. yeah, so let's just say, like, I could read, listen, I could read this book right here, oh, that's a Christianity book, let's not do that, <laughs> I could read this, bake this cookbook. Fuck it. Let's let's say Catcher in the Rye. Okay. I can read Catcher in the Rye and come away with a whole nother perspective or comprehension than you would. Yep. You know what I mean? Now, if I put out something and I take it one way and somebody else takes it another way, and we know, like, and I'm going to be candid here because, you know, I say this and I know you, because I know I've said it to you because I say it all the time. 80% of this country are fucking idiots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And they will see that, and they will run with it. And then they come with this dumbass rhetoric or rhetoric, you know, however you want to say it, you know, <laughs> tomato, tomato, whatever. But they come with this rhetoric that, oh, if he doesn't if he doesn't put a ring on my finger in a year, like, he's got to go. Or if he's not into marriage, he's got to go. This man done put a roof over your head. He done bought you the car that you wanted. He done took care of your kids that weren't his. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's everything you ever wanted, and you're going to let that go for a ring? I'll buy you a fucking ring. I just don't want to be married. What's the problem? Oh, no, that's a deal breaker for her. She doesn't want that. So now just throw all that away. So then you get a guy that has a ring. He gives you the ring, but he beats the shit out of you. Now what? Yeah. Well, that's I was actually just read a quote. Like, if that's... You know, sometimes there's only two tragedies in life. Um, there's only two tragedies in life. One, not getting what you want. And two, getting exactly what you want. Hmm. That's, that's very, that's... Think about that. That's deep. That, that, that's something that, you you know, you could stay up all night and not come up with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think, I think you're definitely right with the memes. There's a lot more than that, too, just with culture, with... TV, the media, and everything you see out there, like, it makes people think that everything is supposed to be sunshine and rainbows all the time. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, that's not reality, though. Oh, no. And if you ask anybody who's actually in a relationship, they'll tell you, like, no, it's not going to be perfect all the time. And it's going to take work because you're two people. You're not the same person. Right. You're two individuals. And no matter how similar you are, there's always going to be points of friction, you I know? Agree. And you can't go in thinking that everything's got to be perfect or that's it. Because you're just going to end up being disappointed a lot. Mm-hmm. And that's and then, just a sad fact of life. Gonna, it's not going to work. Yeah, it's, it's a sad work. fact of life. Yeah. Bro, I think it's a good place to put a pin in it. Hey, you I'll down to come back? Oh, definitely. I like definitely. this. This is a good one, man. Yeah, I have fun with this. Yeah, this is, this is my nice. first podcast ever. Yeah, man. Like a virgin. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you, did, you did great, man. You did great. Hey, you did too. Like, I'm, you know, I really appreciate the opportunity to. Of course, bro. Be on your podcast, you know. I was like I said, I was excited when you first told me about it, and I'm still going through your episode. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, like I said, I wanted to have people I know, people like the normal people. I'm not trying to have you know like some philosopher from such and such a school or some you know actor. I want. Well, I mean, if you not could that get Neil Degrassi Tyson, yeah. please put him on. No, <laughs> let me just be clear. Not that any of those things are options, <laughs> but the whole idea is it's supposed to be geared towards. The average man, right. which is what we are. Right. What's the shit that we deal with? What is it that we're going through, you know, on an average level, on a, on a real level, out there in everyday life? And that's the stuff I want to talk about. That's the stuff we did talk about. All right. I, you know, I, it, I think what you're doing is awesome. I, you know, I look forward to getting even more deeper into it. You know, sometimes I don't have the time to listen, but I, I had to, I would go back. Like I would, I would just pause it. You know, thank God for Spotify. I could just. Yeah. 
come in and go back. I am subscribed, and if anybody is not subscribed by now, you need to be. And if not, I hate you. I'm <laughs> Amen. Sorry, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I do hate you. No, no, I try to keep. I try to keep them from being too long too, because every you know people got shit to do. Yeah, you need to listen to my dumb ass. You Unfortunately, know. today I had nothing to do. This was my. I <laughs> emptied my calendar for this. <laughs> All right, so Mike. Where can they find you? You want to put out any social media handles? Or are you good? Um, no. I, I mean, yeah, I guess you could. Um, if anybody wants to I, follow me on Instagram, it's at El Padrino thirty six, and um, of course, Facebook is Michael Tyrone Emmanuel. Uh, send me, you know, just be a, have a common friend because if you don't, I'm not gonna add you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in. Also, eat at Petey's on Tuesday nights. I just made that up. I'm just playing. Oh, let's say, yo, where's Petey? I never heard of that. <laughs> you turn me on to some new shit. <laughs> Taco Tuesday. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> there is no Petey, so please don't hit me up asking me why didn't I give the address. I'm just playing. <laughs> uh, you guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. As always, if you want to find us, we're on Instagram, Twitter, at A Pod Amongst Men. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, anything you want us to talk about on the air, Hit us up at a pot amongst men at gmail.com. And uh, yo, shout out to my friend Old Head Wyland, S. Hamilton at 36 Chambers of Fatherhood podcast. My man, he helped me out in the beginning, he gave me some good suggestions on how to improve uh, my podcast. Uh, I just want to show some love. If you haven't listened, go listen to 36 Chambers of Fatherhood. It's a great show made by some good dudes, and uh, it's all about love. It's all about positive stuff. Same thing we're about. I'm all about shouting out friends and anybody who's shown me love i'm gonna give it right back so yeah until next week we'll see you see you there i'll see you on another time (laughs) all right guys all right everyone peace